I've discovered I have a leak in my oversized fuel tank. There's a crack somewhere in this seam down in here. This is a fiberglass tank. I've only had this tank for three or four months. It was about 400 bucks. It was really difficult to find. Searching the United States and Canada, we found two back in Pennsylvania. My buddy and I bought both of them. So I might be able to find one in Europe, but for the cost, I think I'm going to try to make one out of aluminum. I, and I definitely don't want to try to fix this fiberglass tank because I don't want to be 20 miles from the truck and have it end up leaking again and lose all my fuel or even worse, start a fire. So we're going to try to make one out of aluminum. I've never done that before, but we'll see if we can get it done. I picked up some 3 quarter inch square tubing at Tractor Supply. It was expensive. This was about 20 bucks. Um, the steel yard is closed on Saturdays. Today's Saturday, so I just went and bit the bullet and spent the 20 bucks. And with that steel, we're going to try to copy the shape of this frame and make a jig to build a new tank in. So let's get started and see if we can figure this out. This is the shape we're going to try to bend the square tubing into to make a jig. I'll make some relief cuts in the square tubing. So right now I'm just trying to figure out how far of a gap I need to make relief cuts in. We'll need to make about two inches worth of relief cuts in the square tubing. All right, we're going to start on relief cutting the square tubing. See if we can get it bent in the shape of that frame. In case you're wondering, this is not my shop, but I do keep my, my table here, my welder, and my chop saw, and a few other little tools here, but this is kind of my little area. My shop is just a little cramped with all the motorcycles and flammable liquids, gas, cleaners, that kind of stuff. So I'm not quite comfortable doing any welding in there. So I need a little, little bigger space. Okay, we're going to switch to the chop saw. The blade is a little bit wider than the grinder, but I think it'll work out okay. It'll be much faster. All right, that looks really good. I think we'll just try to put some tack welds in there, see if we can stiffen this up just a little bit. I'll just keep on checking it as I go working pretty good. This is a pretty big gap. Now that's solid. 
Okay, we're gonna start tacking up our second bend. I just set up a really low voltage so that I can tack in and fill that gap. And we'll get our last one. There we go. Get to tacking on the second one now. Solid now. Okay, we have our jig rails. I've got them set on the bottom of the tank. I measured on the back of the tank. I marked the corner of the, the edge of the tank and then measured in between there and that's six inches. So I'm gonna lay this out on the table. The, I'm gonna lay the rails out on the table and see if I can get some braces tacked in place. Got all these clamps, I might as well use them. These are just some clamps I made from Harbor Freight. I think they were like three bucks and I welded a bolt on. Um, if you buy them from a welding company, they're expensive. They're like 30 bucks a piece. I think I have it laid out correctly. I just have some uh, three quarter inch by eighth inch flat bar that I'm gonna tack weld on. Make sure the tank fits in there well. And then I'll probably use go back and use some square tubing uh, to strengthen it up. Let's tack this in place. It's going to heat things up to relieve the stress. guys I've got the factory tank sitting in those rails we made that's part of the jig we still have a lot of work left to do to the jig but this is the factory tank it's about half a gallon that's why I like the larger capacity tank so that I can go trail riding you can see quite a bit of a difference so this is the one that was leaking in the fiberglass tank this is the tank that came with the bike but it's plastic but it was split where the petcock bolts in 
in both locations the tank is split so there's no fixing that both of these tanks have slightly different angles of these mounting points compared to the factory tank so I'm going to use the factory tank to build some mounts on the jig so we'll know exactly where to bolt in okay we're going to tack a little piece on the front here All right, we'll give that a shot. Okay, I think I have this front mount tacked in the correct place. It's just barely tacked in case I need to move it some more. I'll come back in, I'll add a piece in here, weld it up. I've cut a piece of three quarter inch angle iron and I've also cut a piece of inch and a half angle iron and then we drilled the hole in it and I welded a nut on the back so I'm gonna bolt this on here and try to make some marks so we can figure out exactly where to tack weld things in place and we'll probably do something like that Okay, I don't want to bolt this on and tack it in place because this tank has some fuel in it. Even if I drain the fuel, I wouldn't want to be welding around it. So we'll just tack this angle iron in place and then we'll come back and maybe I'll even tack this in place and we'll have to probably bend the angle just a little bit, but I think we'll be able to get it. All right, let's get this tacked in place. I used a bolt with a couple of nuts so I could make an adjustable height stand for the front of this bracket. Let's see if we can get it tacked on in place. Oh, that looks good. I cut a piece of eighth inch flat bar to weld in as a brace. So I'm gonna tack that in now. I've turned my welder back up to 19 volts so I can start getting better penetration. Okay, I've got all my little supports welded in and I went over it and hit all the tack welds again and did a little more welding to get everything in place and secure. Then I hit it with uh, the sander a little bit to clean things up. Now we need to build a stand for this. 
So I'm going to build a stand that I'll be able to rotate this in so I can weld top and bottom. So let's get started on that. Okay, I think I'm going to put a piece of pipe on each end of the jig and then I'll make a stand with another piece of pipe that this piece of pipe will fit into. I'm just going to weld a nut on here so I can use a bolt to lock it down and stop it from rotating. Okay, we have our two three inch pieces of tubing we're going to weld on to each end. We have our length piece cut to the base that's 28 and a half. Uh, then two vertical pieces that are five and a quarter. And then these will be our legs. This is, I didn't have any more square tubing so all I had was some angle iron. I can cut this off later if I want, if I need it wider, but this is all I had on hand. So we will, we'll tack them in like that. And then these pieces will weld on top like that. And then that'll be on the end. Let's get this all tacked together. Sorry I had audio issues with a couple of the clips here, but I got this base all squared up and now I'm going to tack it in place. With it all tacked in place, I'm going to go ahead and lay in a bigger weld. With everything in place and squared up, we're going to go ahead and tack this end on and then we'll come back and lay in some heavier welds on it. And it rotates just as I hoped it would. Okay, we finished our jig. It rotates so I can weld on either side. Spin it around, work on the bottom if I need to. I can tighten these up to hold it in place. Now I need to start working on the patterns for the tank. If you like my videos, please hit the like button and subscribe so you don't miss my next video. Thanks for watching.